Hi everybody, Renee from Body Mind Strong. And a couple of weeks ago, my boyfriend ran a hundred mile race and I actually crewed for him. And leading up to this, his race, I did a lot of research on what I could find for crew and like what to expect, what to take, you know, some of the things. And I didn't find quite a lot of information. I found some that turned out to be very useful, but not a lot. So I thought I would just do a quick video on you know, what I was expecting, what I ran into, and some clips from the race itself, just for anyone who is interested in running a 100-mile race. So, the race he ran was called Across the Years. It was in Arizona, and it was just that. It was Across the Years. It started a couple days before New Year's and went across New Year's, and I think it ended on the 6th or 7th. So, it lasted 10 days. So, it was a crazy long event. Multiple different races in it. Um, but he just ran the 100 miler, which started on a Saturday, and um, it was kind of really crazy. It was on a one mile loop. It was 1.04 mile, so it was on in a park in a, not just a regular park, but like a, um, like a fitness park where they have, they have baseball fields and stuff like that. And so it was kind of crazy because they had all these different events going on. But when we were there, they only had a couple going on when we were there. So when we showed up to start the 100 mile race, there were people that were running the 200 mile race that started the day before. So there are people that were already running with that. Um, there was a race that started called last man standing, which this one was really crazy. Every 15 minutes they would run a loop. So it was 1.04 miles. And then they had a couple minutes left in the 15 minutes. They rested. And then on the 15th, like on 15 minutes, 30, 45 and on the hour, they would run again. And I think that lasted a little bit over 24 hours. Um, that one was a little bit crazy. And the other one that was crazy that um, it lasted, I think the whole 10 days is to see how many miles you can run in those 10 days. And while we were there, there was at least one woman, she hit the 500 mile marker. <laughs> yeah, she ran like, and I think she ended up running, I want to say like six to 700 miles this whole time. Crazy, right? So you think a hundred mile race is crazy. This woman ran like six, 700 miles, but that was the race we did. And it was slightly different than most ultra marathons because most ultra marathons aren't staged like that, where it's kind of encapsulated, enclosed. A lot of them are through the woods. You're chasing them around mountains like we did when he pays somebody for high lonesome. I was running around the mountain trying to find them. <laughs> so that's a little bit different. So this one was a little bit different. So it was nicer. So I did not prep as much for it because, you know, my expectations going into it is, well, I'll just have everything there. That's fine. He can tell me what he needs. I need to, I don't need to look at the map. I don't need to look at the rules, which I've learned, but it's, you know, I didn't, I wasn't expecting too much because of that. So there was pros and cons to having it staged like that. Um, I was also expecting that I could take naps at night because I was like, okay, I'll go sleep in the car or, or I'll go sleep in the tent that we have. And I figured I sleep a little bit, but not too much, but I figured I'd be taking naps. Um, foods, I thought a little bit about my foods, but not as much as I should have. Other than all that, I knew there was quite a few things that I wasn't even sure of that I probably should have known. So that makes sense. I knew there was stuff that I probably should have known, but I didn't know what they were. And I kind of figured when I get there, I would pretty much just kind of figure it out. Well, after the race, some of the things that we learned was, I mean, we kind of wrote this down. I talked to my boyfriend as well, like what could I have done different? And some of the things that we could have done different together for it. And I knew that one of the bigger things was my foods, you know, I didn't really think about foods till towards the end of what I should take. I was real so focused on his foods, what we needed to take, take for him and how to break it down and how to pack stuff up. Um, when it came to me, I, I think it was the last minute I was grabbing foods and it, my food, I was trying to stay on plan. I'm on a, a training plan right now and I was trying to stay on plan and it started off pretty well most of the day. And then when the sun started to go down, I, that's pretty much when everything went haywire. And I don't, I wasn't expecting it to go this bad. Um, it was because I ended up staying up pretty much all night with him. Um, you know, my thoughts about taking naps, that didn't happen. I took like one nap in the chair, which was funny because I snorted myself awake. Um, so it was like 10 minutes long and that's all I slept. And it's amazing how everything just changed with the lack of sleep. I'm like, I was... 
kind of grabbing anything when I just got hungry. I was like, screw it. I'm just going to grab. I started getting hungry. I was just grabbing. And then I'd be fine for a while. But I was trying to eat someone healthy, but I think it just cut to the point in the middle of the night. I was like, whatever. I'm going to eat whatever I want. It was so that could have been planned a lot better having certain foods but at least now that i know how i respond i think i can plan better next time with my foods um, another thing is downsize how much stuff we took you know i wasn't sure what to expect so i took extra of a lot of things that i don't think i should have taken um, and i also took way too much of his gels he has he has his stash of blocks and i took all of them and i shouldn't have taken all of them he didn't even eat any of his blocks it was all his tailwind that he was taking is it Telwin? Yeah, I think it's Telwin that he was taking. And then his other solid foods that we're doing. So I know after, after you know, hindsight, right? Hindsight's 2020. So I know that next time we can pare it down a lot easier for me to pack things, especially if the next race is we're on the move. I think this race we took too much because we had that safety net of being stationed in one spot the whole time. So I think next time we're definitely going to have to pare down and plan a little bit better, which I think now that after we've gone through this, we kind of know how to you know plan it, pare it down some. Another one, and this was my, I didn't even think about this, was keeping track of time. You know, he was rotating between his ibuprofen and Tylenol the second half of the race and then also his caffeine. and But he was splitting them up and so he wasn't taking them all at the same time. So we were trying to remember when the last time he took it and for those who ran long distance you guys know towards the end of the race you're not thinking as clearly so you really depend on your crew on that one so that was a big screw up on my part I should have been writing down when I when and what I was giving him so I think we did pretty decent on calculating you know keeping them far enough apart but I know that's something I definitely would have to work on for the next time, making sure I track all that down. And then, um, let's see what else. We kind of wrote that. I wrote some stuff down, so I'm just kind of looking at it. And then the other one, he actually told me that I could have done better, was pushing him more to eat towards the end. I was definitely pushing him more on keeping pace, and I had that focus. I mean, I ended up pacing him more than I was planning on to. And so I would pace him for a couple laps, and then I would set out for one or two laps and then I would pace him and set out. So I was keeping him on track that way, but I completely forgot his foods. You know, I thought a little bit about it and we're talking about, this is like four o'clock in the morning. He ended up the race around, I want to say eight. Yeah. Cause he did 24 hours. And so it was those last four hours that I didn't push him as much as I did earlier in the day with food. So that's a good reminder for myself is, you know, keeping track of foods. You know, your runner's not going to want to eat, but you're going to have to force them to get some food in them. So, and it's just interesting because I wasn't sure pushing him on pacing. I wasn't sure how he would respond because this is the first time we've done this. Because runners, you know, when they, they go high, you have your highs and lows. You know, long, long distance runners, you know this, you have highs and lows. And so... We not knowing how to kind of keep him going through his lows, it was kind of a trial and error on this part. But I think we did pretty well overall. Um, I think the only thing we really have to do better again is one, force him to eat more towards the end, and two, keep track of time when he's doing stuff like when he's taking his like um, ibuprofen or Tylenol or his caffeine, making sure when he's eating last. I wasn't keeping track of that. So, um. Other than that, that was pretty much, I think a lot of what, that was pretty much all we learned. Um, I'm actually going to, there's a article right here that I found before the race. Let me see it. I found it before the race and I really liked it. And I wanted to kind of throw this one out because this one's dealing a little bit more with Western States endurance runs. And for you guys who know Western States, that's kind of a hardcore race. And so I wanted to... Um, Put this and I will put the link down below as well but this lady she's been crewing she crewed multiple times but this is kind of things she learned along the way of like six easy steps to crew in an ultra marathon um, first one would be where'd you go plan for the unexpected that one was a little crazy because I don't think we really planned it but you know you do have to plan for the 
an expected change at last minute. You know, your runner will kind of give you a plan on how to run with them through the whole thing, but expect that to change and be on your toes and, and kind of go with the flow and go with, with the, what your runner's needs at that time. Um, another one is make a list, study maps, know the rules. This one was really important. I didn't do this one as well because, again, I felt safe, like, within that loop setting that we were in. Now, when I was running around the mountain trying to find them for the High Lonesome, I definitely was paying attention to the map. In fact, I had an additional map highlighted, and we actually highlighted the route on this map so I knew where everything was. So definitely that's something you want to be aware of, especially if you're out in the woods, you want that map. Um, and know where all the aid stations are and where you can connect with your runners. And then another one is stay focused, keep track of time. Hers is a little bit different. She talks about keeping track like, you know, when your runner takes off and she mentions going out having coffee and then trying to catch, you know, meet the runner at the first station. Well, some people have missed their runners at their first station. So she's talking that one a little bit more, making sure you keep track of when you can meet them at the next station. So again, ours was a little bit different on that one. Um, plan to ha for self-care and a mother hen. That is what I needed. Um, I, when I talked about food, I was all over the place in the middle of the night. I didn't sleep at all. So I wasn't focused on what I needed. I was all focused on him pretty much the whole time. So that was something, that's something you want to make sure, and I, we've actually even talked about this, like if he does something else like this, I want him to have another person so it's not just me, you know, have someone that will can pace him or someone that we can take turns getting up and um, taking care of him, meeting him at the aid stations, and so the other person can at least get some sleep, um, so that way we're not going kind of crazy, not eating or sleeping. So she talks about that one. Uh, she also talks about pack light and be familiar with the gear. That was, I, am, I was familiar with the gear. I knew where he wanted stuff, but pack and light, that's something we definitely need to work on a little bit more. But she makes a good point in this one is also be familiar where they want their gear in their packs. Like if they have a specific pocket, they always like their blocks in or their nutritional gels or where they like their um, body bottle, bo body bottles, <laughs> where they have all their liquid like that. Um, the hammer and all those other products in it and so that's actually really good to know and that was something I told him I need to know where he wanted stuff specifically but of course during this race he didn't use a pack because it was a one mile loop but I think in the future that's something I am definitely going to need more need to know where he wants his stuff if that makes sense um also let's see give no one to give the runner tough love and when not to that one was tough um, that was definitely tough when you don't know the pain because they're in pain. You don't know how to push them in, in what direction. And I think that just comes with running with the person and going through this enough times, knowing when you need to tell them to get up out of the chair or when to, it's okay, take a couple minutes. You need to rest, stretch that out or, um, oh, speaking of stretching out, one thing we found and we totally love and it completely worked for him is that we used a rolling pin you know you can get those fancy rolling things to roll out your muscles we didn't have that so we just took a rolling pin and about halfway through probably early late early evening seven eight o'clock ish his calf started cramping up and he was really struggling i rolled out his calf and boom he was good he took off running like it was nothing um so definitely <laughs> things you learn um have a rolling pin or something to roll out their muscles because they're gonna need it but anyways so it's just kind of knowing when to give runners tough love and when to give them breaks. That's, that is a definitely tough one. And I think we actually, we even talked about this beforehand of what I've asked him that I'm like, when do you need me to push you? When do you need me to, you know, let you rest? What are some signs? And so that was one thing that kind of helped me out of the way, but a lot of it, it's just experience. And let's see, does she have anything else? I think it was, Oh, have fun. Oh, Yes, definitely have fun because, you know, you are there specifically for this runner. So it's all about them. But don't forget to have fun for yourself and get to know all the other crews, the people around. I met some really interesting people when I was there. In fact, this one couple that was next to us, her daughter, their daughter was running the 200 mile race. I totally love them. They were awesome. So it was, and they helped me keep me, um, not occupied, um, 
So I wasn't so lonely. You know, they kept me, you know, I was able to talk to them. They did, were sleeping through the night. So I actually kind of helped their runner out a little bit. I looked at other runners, kind of helped them out when I could. And so it was just interesting. But get to know the people around you. It's really actually kind of awesome who you meet and get to know. But that's pretty much it. I went ahead, I went ahead and did a couple um, clips, I think three or four clips from the race. And it's, I'll post this at the end just to kind of give you guys a glimpse of, you know, I did a little video in the beginning, through the day, you know, in the middle of the night. So I think I, yeah, I don't think I only ended up doing three because I ended up being so focused. I wanted to do more, but I was a little bit focused on him. But so I went ahead and put that in. So I'll put that at the end. If you guys think of anything else, you know, if you guys have other tips, post them below, other websites to refer to for any anyone else who's interested in crew and put it below. So that way we are all sharing. Um, so that the more information we get out there for crews, I think the better just because I think more is better because it is not a big talked about area and ultra marathons, hundred plus are becoming a huge thing now. So, all right. Well, I hope you guys are having a great day and make sure you're doing at least one thing today that's going to get you one step closer to one of your goals. Okay. All right. It is, I think, 7 o'clock in the morning. We just got here to the Cross the Years race. Um, boyfriend's checking in to his 100 miler right now. And if you can tell, the sun's finally starting to come up. Um, it actually is looking brighter on the phone than it is. But we got here at Oh Dark 100. Um, or we call it O Dark 30. So this is the beginning of hopefully only 24 hours we'll be out here, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so we are at a huge complex in the West Valley. Lots like a sports complex type thing. So I don't know, right there's all the tents. Just wanted to kind of show you that we were here and we're starting and I'll just film throughout this whole race and we'll see what comes up. So that's part of the track right there where they go running by but so that's the main alley area but anyways Whew, look at that sky right sunrise tip valley look at that sunrise all right this is our little setup this is more for me holding all this stuff while he runs so we just actually picked up this beach tent and so far it seems to be working really well I'll show you kind of everything in it this is all his stuff air drying that he was sweating in earlier we're just letting it hang um, to dry but then also these these are gonna be really awesome tonight the solar lights soon as they should be fully powered tonight so I should have light most of the night this is looks a little chaos chaotic I guess but this is pretty much everything we need that's going to last me throughout the night as well. So this is our running bag. It's got a bunch of different bags in it. Um, first aid, all his energy stuff in here as well. And then we have some of the tailwind. So we have a bunch of the running in it. That's his extra pair of clothes. So if he needs to change tonight, we have that there. Um, this is more my camping stuff. Some of his energy stuff is <laughs> pumpkin pies. Yes. Um, some cherry juice for him for inflammation to see if that helps out and some of the camping stuff for me so that's all the leftover bags from the you know the camp chairs and so forth and blanket for me for later my jackets underneath that this is mostly my stuff to mess around with um, while I'm here um, of course we have a scale he likes to kind of keep track of where he's at hydration wise making sure he doesn't overdo it starts bloating or he doesn't or like retaining or he um, doesn't start hydrating himself so we weigh him every so often and then of course food water paper towels kind of need it and of course over here we have the two um, coolers which I keep changing to keep them in the shade but it has all the food and that's pretty much it Okay, quick update. It is uh, six hours into the race. Uh, we got here about seven o'clock this morning, freezing my butt off. I was running around in a nice little blanket trying to keep warm. Uh, he took off running at eight, so i just been crewing for the last six hours. And even though I was freezing my butt off, look at now, I am nice and roasting. Tank top, shorts, and uh, flip-flops, and it's nice. And yes, it is January. Um, gorgeous weather. Love this. I'm trying to absorb all I can, because come tonight, I will be freezing my butt off again. And there it is, another sunrise. 
All right, it is Sunday, 7 a.m. in the morning. We have actually been here exactly 24 hours. <sighs> My boyfriend has three laps left, which is about a little over a mile each lap, so he's almost done. Um, coming in second, which is totally awesome. Wasn't expecting that at all, um, which is pretty cool. But I've managed to pack almost everything up. It's in the car. I've only gotten 10 minutes of sleep last night. Um, it could have, would have been more, except for my head was tilted back and I snorted myself awake. <laughs> so I only got 10 minutes. I'm on a bunch of monster, well not a bunch, probably about half a can of monster or so. Yeah, I can definitely tell the difference between a monster and a rock star, so the monster is helping really right now. So, yeah, needless to say, I'm a little tired. I did do several laps with him to try to get him on pace to keep him where his secondary goal was at. Um, he did miss that, but he he's coming very close to it, which is still pretty awesome considering this is his first hundred he's completing. Um, but yeah, life of a crew member. It is tiring, exhausting, and but it's kind of cool to see your runner achieve their goals. So, all right, that's I think enough of the filming for this stuff because I am tired. Yes, and I think I might actually break my diet and stop and get some Dunkin' Donuts on the way home. I think I deserve it. <laughs> okay. Um, on that note, I am going to go finish seeing him in and and that's it. We gotta go home and sleep. Yes, gotta go home and sleep.